Hello, Internet. I'm Ren, and this is Ren Rants, a channel where I talk about things I care about. Today, I want to talk about the re re rebooting of Futurama and take a look at season eight's debut episode, The Impossible Stream. We're back, baby! <laughs> I've been a fan of Futurama since watching the first few seasons as they started airing way back in 1999 as a wee elementary schooler sitting way too close to the TV. So this show has a special place in my heart. It's been canceled and brought back numerous times now with mixed results, but so far, every time it returns, it does so with some great new stories to tell. Although, as I often say with Star Trek, the individual episodes aren't all winners. We'll start with some spoiler-free impressions before going through the episode in more detail, and I'll be sure to give you a warning before I do. The Impossible Stream isn't terrible or anything. It's not nearly as bad as the worst of the Comedy Central reboot episodes, but it doesn't stand out as especially great either. The concept the episode is based around feels a bit weak and mostly exists to make fun of studio executives, which I'm totally here for. Oh, what about Fulu? They'll bring back any old crap. No, seriously though, support striking actors and writers. I just wish it were either plottier or more creative. It kind of felt like it didn't have enough emotional storytelling or unique elements to draw me, and I struggled to focus on it the first time I watched it through. It just wasn't even in the same universe as some of Futurama's best episodes. They set the bar so high. That said, I'm not concerned about the quality of the season overall. From the trailer, I think we're going to get some great stuff in later episodes. Futurama has always been somewhat inconsistent, but even the reboots still manage to capture that classic Futurama magic once in a while. For example, I love Bender's big score. It's downright cinematic at times, and it's the best of the reboot movies, if you ask me. And there were some episodes in the later seasons that genuinely rivaled the best of Futurama's early episodes. But the impossible stream just isn't among them. Luckily, even the more forgettable Futurama episodes have their moments. There were things that worked in this episode. A few of the jokes got a laugh out of me. His consciousness will be severed. Much as this hedge clipper severs Leela's ponytail. The continuity and little references to previous episodes made me smile, and it was nice seeing the cast together again. I'm also grateful that the show has mostly kept its visual style fairly consistent throughout its many incarnations. For the first episode of a reboot, it was okay. But that's about all I've got without getting into the details, so let's fly the Planet Express ship straight to Spoiler Planet. This video contains spoilers for The Impossible Stream and for Futurama generally. You've been warned. We pick up where we left off in Meanwhile, with Leela and Fry deciding to go around again after living a whole life together with the rest of the world frozen. I think Futurama will be hard-pressed to top Meanwhile when it inevitably gets cancelled or ends again, because as a series ender, it was pretty much perfect, but I'm excited to see them try anyways. Everyone else unfreezes, and we cut to the familiar theme song with some slight changes. I loved the Avenged title card for this episode, which matches up with the Avenge Us one from Meanwhile, and the theme song always makes me feel so nostalgic. I'm also glad Hulu added that last little soundbite back in. One thing about Futurama reboots is basically every time they come back, they let their feelings about the studio execs be known. Yes, I'm afraid the brainless drones who run the network canceled our license. But this episode feels like it spends basically half of its runtime on it. Professor Farnsworth tells everyone that it's now 3023. Lord, it's the year 3023! Fry has a crisis about how little he's accomplished and decides to set a goal for himself. 23 years, and I've achieved nothing. Which is to watch every TV show episode ever made. I, Philip J. Fry, hereby pledge to watch every TV show ever made. For reasons. I guess we know Fry likes TV, but this still just seems kind of bizarre. Aren't you gonna stop this? I should, but I don't want to crush his dreams. Leela tries to be supportive, and what ensues is... not bad. Fry starts watching TV on Fulu. Side note, I love his Panucci's Pizza email. I enjoyed the scary mirror and how it made fun of Black Mirror's similarities to the Twilight Zone. You're entering a show that is slightly different from previous, very similar shows. I'll also never not enjoy dunking on NFT bros. And check the price of my NFTs, because I'm an important tech guy. NFTs worthless. What? But some of the jokes didn't quite land. We should support him, not point and laugh. Oh, right, I forgot the point. Or felt repetitive. Any TV show that truly cares about its audience that must be canceled every few years 
happy. I did appreciate these little background jokes with the TV, though. How I Met My Smizmar, Blobs Burgers, Star Trek The Original Reboot, and Better Call Cthulhu are my favorites. This joke also got a snort out of me. What is the deal with non-binary robots? <laughs> wow, PC crowd. I'm a sucker for puns and it had two of them. Fry is upset because he can't watch the remaining 13,000 episodes of the final season of All My Circuits fast enough and Leela and the professor enable him with, um... Ow! My cortex! Increasingly drastic methods. Why is it called a still suit? Because you'll be sitting perfectly still, and I can't have you soiling my binge lounger Months later, Fry is still binging, but something is wrong. If he runs out of episodes, he'll die. But if he reaches the end of the series, God forbid, his consciousness will be severed. Leela tries to save him by rebooting all my circuits. It's fun that they brought back the execubots from previous television-focused episodes. It's funny, but is it going to get them off their tractors? The execubots call Robot Hell to dredge up Calculon, who the robot devil is happy to be rid of again. <gasps> Yes, you can have him. I love that he's playing with the Hellraiser puzzle box like a Rubik's Cube. They have to produce a new episode every hour to keep up with Fry. If Law and Order can do it, so can you. It's great how many recurring characters they managed to work into this episode. Fry starts streaming at double speed, and they have to make the episodes twice as fast, and the quality suffers even more. But Fry is in a fragile state, so they keep plugging along. The episodes stop coming because the studio has worked the writers to death. It's those damned lazy writers! Can't even manage to write an hour-long episode every 15 minutes! So they have Bender write the episodes instead. Hello, Writers Guild! The director has a heart attack and Leela takes over and things get even worse. The execubots finally cancel all my circuits again. We love everything about this show. It's not working at all. You're canceled. <gasps> the Planet Express gang tries to ease Fry back into reality as he reaches the finale. The suit catches fire, but it turns out Fry's not in it. The terrible episodes drove him out ages ago. I mean, they were unwatchable. The writing and the executive producing really went downhill towards the end. And he was catching up on reading? Go. I decided to catch up on my reading. Okay. Also, Futurama loves to make Leela think Fry is dead and that she's responsible. How could I have been so stupid? <laughs> like they do it so often. <gasps> he's, he's dead. Ah! Oh! You gave me your oxygen? What's the deal with that? The episode ends with Fry speaking on the dangers of binging, streaming, and reboots. Viewers must binge responsibly, the same way they smoke cigarettes or drink bleach. Some of it is a bit on the nose, but some of it feels prescient with the writer's strike. Although I don't think it quite says enough to carry the episode. Ultimately, the impossible stream felt a bit lackluster. Not a lot happened and then it was over. Futurama is at its strongest when it leans into its sci-fi or emotional elements, but this episode really didn't make much use of them and wasn't quite funny enough to make up for it. If it were any other show, such a mediocre showing for a first episode of a reboot would worry me, but Rebirth, the episode that brought Futurama back in 2010, was worse. And in the same set of rebooted seasons that had stinkers like Yo Leela Leela, The Da Vinci Code, and Attack of the Killer App, they also gave us incredible episodes like The Late Philip J. Fry, A Game of Tones, Lethal Inspection, and of course, that wonderful series finale, Meanwhile, as well as plenty of episodes that were middle of the pack. I just think The Impossible Stream could have done more to get us excited about this season, but I probably won't skip it on rewatches or anything. From the trailer this season, though, I think season eight will have many opportunities to redeem itself. I am worried about the COVID episode. It could go either way. One great thing about the world of Futurama is that there are so many directions for the writers to go that it's easy to not run out of new ideas and become stale in the way that shows like The Simpsons or American Dad or Family Guy have. I'm glad that the writers are still experimenting. This one just didn't quite work for me. Before I go, I do want to note that there are some serious allegations against the creator of Futurama, The Simpsons, and disenchanted Matt Groening, including questionable conduct on a certain wealthy human trafficker's plane. So I understand and respect anyone's choice not to watch Futurama. Although it gives him some degree of clout, it doesn't seem he's very involved with the actual writing and running of the show, so I will still be watching it, but I don't want to promote it in any way without bringing that information about groaning to light. Alrighty, so that's all I have on this episode for now. I'm not sure if I will be reviewing all of the new episodes of Futurama as they come out, but I will at least be checking in throughout the season. Let me know what you thought of the impossible stream in the comments down below. And sorry, my filming setup is still like this.
it will get better again, I promise. Like, share, and subscribe for more videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Vito Zane. Good night. God bless Earth and Aru.